Me gustaría llamar a nuestro siguiente presentador, eh, yo Fujimura, espero haberlo dicho mínimamente, decentemente. Welcome, sir. Eh, yo viene de Japón, de la Universidad de Fukuoka, y nos va a hablar de un caso de uso de un despliegue del servidor NTP a gran escala en Japón. The floor is yours, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your introduction. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank you all for attending this presentation. I'm very pleased to meet you all. My name is Fujimura and I'm with the IT Center at Fukuoka University. Today, I would like to introduce Fukuoka University NTP system. I deeply appreciate the opportunity to make this presentation. Okay. And there are four main points I would like to talk about in this presentation. Firstly, I would like to introduce Fukuoka University and our objectives. Next, I will outline our university's NTP service and its traffic analysis, why it is so popular in the world and describe NTP service stop experiment. I will finish the presentation with frequently asked questions and a summary. The presentation will take approximately 25 minutes. Firstly, allow me to introduce Fukuoka University and our objectives. Fukuoka University is a private university which was established 85 years ago. It was connected to the internet in 1993. The AS number is 18148 and the IPv4 prefix is 133.100. 0.0 slash 16. The IPv6 prefix is 2405 colon BE00 colon slash 32. It is located in Fukuoka City, Japan. I hope you can visit Fukuoka someday. We look forward to welcoming you anytime. Getting back to Fukuoka University, it has nine faculties, 31 departments, 10 graduate courses, and 33 specialty courses. The number of undergraduate and graduate students total 20,000. It has three university hospitals and two attached high schools and one attached junior high school. Today, I would like to talk about three objectives. The first is, I would like to share the current status of Fukuoka University public NTP service with you. The second is to ascertain the reason for the increase in NTP traffic because we are troubled with lot of NTP traffic. The third is how to decrease NTP traffic. First, I will give a brief description, description of the NTP. NTP stands for Network Time Protocol. 
and it synchronizes clocks over the internet. The packet sizes are small, averaging 90 bytes. Both the transmission and the reception packets are same size. Let me explain about Fukuoka University NTP service and its background. The Fukuoka University NTP service commenced in October 1993. It was the first public NTP service using GPS in Japan. And the IPv4 address was 133.100.9.2 and 133.100.11.8. However, the 133.100.11.8 has already been terminated because its traffic is very little compared to 133.100.9.2. After the service commenced, access volumes increased. This graph shows the recent NTP traffic. This averages out to a constant traffic volume of approximately 256 megabits. The number of packets is approximately 340,000 packets per second. This packet volume is constantly being sent to the Fukuoka University network. The number of packets is gradually increasing. Next, we tried analyzing NTP traffic using flow collector. These statistics are for the month of June 2019. As you can see on this slide, showing the countries and the regions of origin traffic. Brazil was first, China second, and Argentina third, followed by the Spain fourth, Italy fifth, Germany sixth, United States seventh, Russia eighth, Iraq ninth, Poland tenth. Mexico was thirteenth. As you can see, we get access from 239 countries and regions throughout the world. This chart is of the previous statistics I showed, but limited to Rakhnik countries and regions. Brazil tops the access with approximately 56,000 packets per second at a bandwidth of 42 megabits. In second place is Argentina, followed by Mexico third, Ecuador fourth, Chile fifth, Bolivia sixth, Costa Rica seventh, Colombia eighth, Uruguay ninth, and Paraguay. 10th. I also have statistics of AS numbers. If you are interested in the statistics, please mention it to me. Or please send me your message via Rakunik app. I would like to discuss it with you individually later. This chart shows the level of NTP traffic since 
2015, in 2005, it was 900 packets per second, where now it is about 332,000 packets per second. As you can see, traffic is ever increasing. How does the volumes get so high? One theory is thought to be network device manuals. Allow me to show you one example. This is a manual for the certain network switch. The device time configuration is written as 133.100.9.2. As well as this manual, many other network devices and multifunction machines have 133.100.9.2 written in them. I also, a number of devices have the Fukuoka University NTP server address as they are default. The devices which have this setting are Linux and VGBox, household use broadband routers, and wireless RAN access points. Others include web camera firmware, which had 133.100.9.2 as the NTP server in its factory settings. This is a device I actually picked up in the Philippines, which has the Fukuoka University NTP server address as its default. However, I think you can say it is the tip of the iceberg, and we haven't found the actual cause of the traffic yet. Next, I would like to introduce the current configuration of the NTP service. This diagram shows the NTP server network setup. AES-2907 is connected to the campus network at 10 gigabits, and AES-4713 is 1 gigabit. Fukuoka University has been designated 133.100.0.0-16 by the Japan Network Information Center. As you can see in this diagram, the network addresses are split, and the NTP network and campus network are separately connected and advertised on the internet. The NTP's BGP router is connected at 10 gigabits, and is only pairing with AES-2907. Therefore, the NTP traffic enters from the AES-2907. It does not pass by the AES-4713 connected at one gigabit. The NTP network and the campus network have been separated to limit the adverse effect on the NTP traffic. What do you think when you see this network setup? Do you think we should just stop the service or filter it? 
There's a reason why we can't just simply stop the service. Now, I will introduce why. We conducted an experiment to see what would happen to traffic if we stopped the service. The experiment was conducted for eight hours. We terminated the service by disposing of all the NTP packets sent to 133.100.9.2. This graph shows the results as soon as the service was stopped the number of NTP packets jumped to a maximum of 950,000 packets per second at about 740 megabits. We would see an increase of 500,000 packets per second at 500 megabits from normal traffic. This experiment showed that stopping the service would result in an increase in traffic. On stopping the service, the traffic increased and on analyzing the data, we found three distinct patterns. The first was access at regular intervals of five or 10 minutes. This pattern was probably clock synchronization at a designated time by NTP date. We speculate that the NTP date command in Chrome will send a packet at specific intervals. The second pattern is access at specific intervals. This is probably by NTPD or similar clock synchronization software. The third pattern is the retry, which comes at increasingly shorter intervals. When there is no response to an NTP request, the retry interval is a cause of increasing traffic. We have never heard of this kind of implementation. And I believe it is important to find the root cause. If anyone has heard of this type of implementation, I would like to discuss it with you individually later. So please mention it to me. The service termination experiment showed us that if we stop the service, traffic will increase. Because the service was stopped for only an eight hour period, we don't know how high traffic may have increased in, in the future. We would like to conduct another such experiment over a longer period of time to collect data. Therefore, we discovered what will happen if we simply terminate the service.
I often get asked questions and my opinion on the public NTP service. So I will introduce the FAQs that I get. The first question. With this kind of traffic, you may think that using an ISP filter up the system is an option. Note that the NTP server traffic is estimated to continue for decades into the future. Perhaps traffic will never end as long as IPv4 exists in this world. If so, then the filter must be maintained for as long as, and we will have to keep estimating how much traffic there is. Unfortunately, there is no such long-term maintenance filter at any ISPs in Japan. Secondary, there is an opinion that you would cease if we send false time data. This is technically possible, but it would have a great impact. An incorrect time would affect the end user the most. Many processing operations are based on having correct time, and it is a standard for machines which have multiple time zones. Sending an incorrect time may have an impact around the world, and it is not something we should be doing. Thirdly, people ask how you can terminate the service. We are considering putting the traffic through our network devices using BGP circuit operation and then dropping them into the black hole. We are discussing whether to stop promoting our public NTP service network reference. We will also continue to analyze the data we have obtained. So allow me to present my conclusions. Firstly, let me summarize. Fukuoka University's public NTP service receives approximately 340,000 requests per second. The number of requests is still gradually increasing. Requests come from countries and regions throughout the world. The Fukuoka University network does not desire any increase. And even if we see NTP service, huge volumes of literary requests will be generated. Next, I have a request of everyone. If your service manual has the clock synchronization settings at 133.100.9.2 or 133.100.11.8, then please do not use them. If there are any firmware developers here today, 
please check your NTP server settings. If you find that these are your settings, we request you change them. Please do not use 133.100.9.2 or 133.100.11.8. And if there are any manual creators here today, please check your NTP server setting notations. If you find that these are your settings, we request you change them. Please do not use 133.100.9.2 or 133.100.11.8. If you know any firmware developers or manual creators, tell them about today's presentation. I would now like to finish my presentation. We would like to find the cause of the increase in NTP traffic and reduce it. And eventually, we would like to stop the public NTP service to the world as soon as possible. We look forward to your cooperation in our endeavor. Thank you all for coming today. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was, that was extremely interesting. I, 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 I cannot imagine why when you stop the service you get that <laughs> amount of traffic. That is extremely interesting. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, preguntas, adelante. Don Alejandro. Hi, Alejandro Martinez Varela from Universidad de Guadalajara. Uh, it's two questions. First one, if you've been able to uh, calculate how much money does, has, has it cost Fukuoka University to uh, deliver this service? And two, if, if the university has uh, tried to make some of these companies accountable for their lousy um, building of firmware and, 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 and documentation for the products, because there certainly uh, should be a case in which you could have some of that money being retributed to the university. Uh, particularly because, uh, as, as you mentioned, um, stopping the service will affect you more and also will affect some of those um, devices that, that, that rely on that uh, burned out uh, configuration. Thank you. Um, we, we spent the money, uh, I think estimate, it's estimated, okay. Um, it's about uh, 20, 20 million. Mm, for uh, five or six years. Mm. <laughs> yes. So uh, we 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 don't have enough budget now. So we would like to stop the service as soon as possible. I hope. <laughs> mm, sorry. Mm. <laughs> Uh, I have no idea now. <laughs> um, Pablo Fritz from Kawase. Um, I think this is a nice, nice for us example of, of what happens when one doesn't use in his manuals the uh, IPs designed to be used in the manuals. Hmm. Um, but uh, I think uh, each ISP represented here could give you some answers. Um, I come here to, to say something. Um, the traffic increase is expected. I think if you didn't reconnect, you would get 30 times the original traffic. Um, each uh, good implementation of NTP uh, does a tail-off. 
So it first starts uh, requesting each, I think, 70, 64 seconds and then uh, increases the interval. So if you cut the service, um, you will get, uh, after each timeout of, of, of one re request, the next request will be uh, faster. So you will get, um, I think, 30 times the traffic. Um, what one will do as an ISP is uh, moving the NTP servers to another mm -hmm. prefix and stop advertising it. Mm -hmm. I think that is the fastest and best answer. Um, you will immediately uh, stop the traffic. Um, no one will get the traffic if you request your provider to stop it. The provider will pay for the traffic, but you not. Uh, if you stop advertising it, there is no more traffic. And um, when a end user receives a new device and tries to make it work, it will see it doesn't work, will call the provider. The provider will say, ah, yes, you need to use another IP, give them another IP, and after six months, one year, mm -hmm. they will change the manuals and change the default configuration. So you need to mark this prefix as do not use in the next 10 years or give it back to the, <laughs> uh, to the organization that gives you the, the, the prefix. And uh, after some time, you won't have any traffic anymore. Thank you. Gracias, Pablo. No tenemos tiempo para más preguntas. Disculpas, estamos muy atrasados. Do you want to make any final comments? Sure. Do you want to make any final comments regarding that observation? Uh, just uh, this device has uh, 133.100.9.2, but under uh, uh, web console, this device. But uh, we uh, cannot change the NTP server IP address. No, uh, no setting on this device. We cannot change. <laughs> Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. Aplauso. Thank you.